In this video, we'll work through a few examples to show how the Pythagorean theorem is used. Two of those examples will involve finding an unknown side length in a right triangle, and the third will involve using the Pythagorean theorem to determine whether or not a triangle is indeed a right triangle. So here's our first example in which we're asked to determine the unknown side length in this triangle. We have two side lengths here, but we're missing the third, so that's the one we need to find. And we can do this using several approaches. We have a, a diagram approach that we can use as well as an algebra method. And I'll show you both of those here as I will for the other two examples. So how, where do we begin? Well, let's start with the algebra method. Now for either of these methods, I strongly recommend you begin by giving that unknown side a label or a name. And since it is the hypotenuse of the triangle, and I know that because it's across from the right angle, I'm going to call it C. If it was not the hypotenuse, I would call it either A or B. So let's start with our algebra method. We know that the Pythagorean theorem states that A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And C is the hypotenuse. That's why I recommended calling this C. So we can fill in values for A and B in this equation here. And it doesn't matter which one you call A and which one you call B. Let's call this A and we'll call this B. So we have 5 squared plus 8 squared is going to work out to C squared. Now 5 squared is just 5 times 5, which is 25. 8 squared is 8 times 8, which is 64. And that equals C squared. We can add these two numbers here. 25 plus 64 will give us 89. And that's C squared. So we know here that whatever C squared is, it's supposed to work out to 89. I just wrote it the other way there. So how can we figure out what C is? Well, we could use our calculator and just use the opposite of squaring, the inverse operation, which is to square root. So if I call up my calculator here, I'm going to figure out the square root of 89. So I'll just punch in square root of 89 and beware on your calculator, you might have to hit 89 first and then square root. And that gives us approximately 9.4 if we round it to one decimal place. So C equals about 9.4 centimeters. If we want the answer exactly, we have square root of 89, or if we want it in approximate form, we can use 9.4. So there we go, that's using the algebra method. We could also solve this problem by just using a diagram. Recall that the Pythagorean theorem is all about areas, specifically areas of squares that are built on the sides of the triangle. So if I make a square off of each side of this triangle, and I'm doing a rough square here, close counts, of course, if you want it to look really nice, you can use a ruler. So something like this. There we go, some squares. And we want to find the area of these squares. Well, looking at this square here, each side is 5 centimeters long, so the area would be 5 times 5, and that's 25. So that's 25 centimeters squared for the area. Similarly, the area of this square would be 8 times 8, since all the side lengths are 8. And 8 times 8 is 64 centimeters squared. And according to the Pythagorean theorem, these two areas should add up to the area of the square that's built on the hypotenuse of the triangle. So if I add 64 and 25, that's where I get 89 centimeters squared. That's the area of the square, but remember we need to find the length of side C. So once again, we can do that by figuring out what number times itself works out to 89. And in order to do that, we need to find the square root of 89. So we could say C equals the square root of 89. And as we've seen, that equals approximately 9.4 centimeters. So there we go, two ways to find the unknown hypotenuse in a right triangle. Let's move on to the next example. Now this problem looks very similar to the previous problem, but notice this time we are not being asked to find the length of the hypotenuse. We're already told that it's 12.3 meters. Instead, we're being asked to find the length of one of the other sides, or legs, as they're often called. And we're already told that that side is called x. So let's start again with the algebra method. We have from the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And we can begin to put our values in for a, b, and c, but it's really important that we remember c represents the hypotenuse. So for our triangle, 
that will be 12.3. As far as A and B are concerned, you can call either of these A and the other B. It really doesn't matter. So I'll start by replacing A with this side. So all I'm going to do instead of writing A squared is write X squared. And for B, I'll use 5.7. Don't forget to square it. And for C, I'll use 12.3, which is the hypotenuse. And we can find the value of 5.7 squared and 12.3 squared. Just open up my calculator. 5.7 squared means 5.7 times itself. And that gives us 32.49. So I'll have x squared plus 32.49 equals, and 12.3 squared, this time I'll use the squared button on my calculator, 151.29. So where to go from here? Well, we want to solve for x, so let's get rid of this plus 32.49, and we'll do that by subtracting 32.49 from both sides of the equation. When we do that, it disappears on the left side, and on the right side, we get 151.29 minus 32.49. And if we do that subtraction, we get 118.8. So x squared equals 118.8. Now that's x squared. We want to find x. So once again, we'll use the opposite of squaring, which is square rooting. And the square root of 118.8 is approximately 10.9 if we round. So x equals approximately 10.9 meters. And there we go. Just a little side note. Sometimes when we're not finding the hypotenuse, the Pythagorean theorem is written out as a squared equals c squared minus b squared, or b squared equals c squared minus a squared. And all that does, it gets us a little closer to this step earlier in our solution. Of course, that's not necessary. You can always start with this form if you like. Now let's take a look at how we could solve this problem using just the diagram. We know that the Pythagorean theorem is based on the area of squares built on the sides of the triangle. So let's draw those squares again. And close counts. There we go, and we'll find the area of each square. So for this square here, the area would be 5.7 times 5.7, and we've already seen that that's 32.49 meters squared. And this square here would have an area of 12.3 times itself, which we've seen gives us 151.29 meters squared. Now we don't know the area of this square, but we can easily figure it out because the Pythagorean theorem says that this area plus this area should add up to the area of the square built on the hypotenuse. So we really need to figure out what number here could we add to 32.49 in order to get 151.29. Well, we can just work backwards and do 151.29 minus 32.49, and that'll give us the area of this square. And when we do that, we've already seen we get a result of 118.8. So 151.29 minus 32.49 gives us 118.8. And that is the area of this square. So how do we find the length of this side? Well, again, we need some number multiplied by itself to give us 118.8. So we can figure that out by taking the square root of 118.8. So x equals the square root of 118.8. And we've already seen that that equals approximately 10.9 meters. And there we go. Two methods for finding the unknown side when it is not the hypotenuse. And the key here is to remember we'll have a subtraction, whether it's there or there. In our final example here, we're going to determine whether or not a given triangle is a right triangle. And we're told that the side lengths of a triangle are four centimeters, five centimeters, and six centimeters. So how can we figure out if that triangle is a right triangle? Well, if it's a right triangle, it would have to satisfy the Pythagorean theorem. That is, it would have to work in the Pythagorean theorem. 
And that's what we'll do to figure out whether or not we have a right triangle. We'll see if it satisfies the Pythagorean theorem. Now I strongly recommend you begin by drawing a diagram. And if this triangle was indeed a right triangle, it would have to have a hypotenuse of six since that's the longest side length that we're given. So I'm going to draw a diagram that kind of looks like a right triangle with a hypotenuse of six. So maybe we have four centimeters here, five centimeters here, and six centimeters for the hypotenuse. And I'll label those four centimeters, five centimeters, and six centimeters. Now we don't know that we have a right angle here, so I'll put a question mark in there for now. So how could we figure out if this is actually a right angle triangle? Well, let's see if it works for the Pythagorean theorem. And we know that the Pythagorean theorem is all about the area of squares built on the sides of the triangle. So I'll draw those squares and then I'll go and find their areas and see what happens. So for this square, its area would be four centimeters times four centimeters, which is 16 centimeters squared. For this square, we'd have five times five, which is 25 centimeters squared. And for this square, the area would be six centimeters times six centimeters, which is 36 centimeters squared. Now, if this was a right angle triangle, we would have to have that the two smaller areas add up to the bigger area. And that actually does not happen here. 16 plus 25 is not 36, it's 41. And because that does not happen, we know that the Pythagorean theorem is not satisfied with this triangle. And therefore, this triangle cannot be a right triangle. So we can say 16 plus 25 does not equal 36. Therefore, it is not a right triangle. We can also solve this problem using an algebraic approach. We know that the Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where c is the hypotenuse length. So how can we use this to figure out if we have a right triangle? Well, we'll split up the Pythagorean theorem equation here into its left and right sides. So the left side is a squared plus b squared, and the right side is simply c squared. We need to determine whether or not this expression is equal to this expression for our given side lengths. If those expressions are the same, that means the Pythagorean theorem is satisfied and we do indeed have a right triangle. Now again, if this was a right triangle, the hypotenuse would have to be six since that's the longest side. So I'll substitute that in for C and that gives us six squared, which is six times six or 36. For A and B, I can use four and five. So I'll use four for A and five for B. And that gives us 16 plus 25, which is 41. Notice that our a squared plus b squared does not equal our c squared. Therefore, the Pythagorean theorem is not satisfied. So we can say, therefore, left side does not equal right side. And therefore, we do not have a right triangle. And that's it.